Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. And in today's video, I'll tell you how to fix a puncture or a flat tire on your Brompton. I'll start by doing a very in-depth demonstration and explanation of how it works for the rear wheel, because that is much more challenging than the front wheel. And then in the end, I'll show you the differences um, so you could do the same thing to your front wheel as well. This video is going to be long. So again, if you're using a computer, you can hover your mouse over the red timeline of the video and you can skip to sections that you want to rewatch. I recommend you watch the whole video before you start fixing your tire, just so you know if you're gonna be comfortable doing those things and also just so you know what's coming ahead. I highly recommend you try to work on your bike even if you don't feel that confident in the beginning because it's very liberating you know, to be able to do maintenance on your bike and to fix all sorts of problems while on the road. And I can guarantee you, if you can fix the rear wheel of a Brompton, a flat tire on the rear wheel, you can basically do anything out on the road. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into it. One of the first things that you want to do is to flip it upside down. If you're fixing your bike at home, you can use an old sock to protect your saddle. All you need to do is put the sock on top of your saddle. And it actually looks pretty nice. Bear in mind that some of the older Bromptons have their shifters on top of the handlebar and that can interfere or be damaged when you flip the bike upside down. Before we do anything, you want the, the right gear to be on number three and you want the left gear to be on the plus sign. That way we are on the heaviest possible gear of this bike. Before we do anything, let's take a look at what we have here and what we're gonna have to deal with during this process. So on the right side of the bike, there is this chain tensioner that we're gonna have to remove. There's also this gear indicator chain. We're gonna have to deal with this one as well. It goes inside of the hub. There are all these nuts. So there's this nut here that we're gonna have to remove. There is the nut on the other side. In this video, I'll be using the Brompton toolkit, but you can use um, the equivalent tools from any manufacturer. Because this chain tensioner is quite strong, the first thing you're gonna want to do is pull the chain tensioner all the way down and remove the chain from it. Then you can carefully release it. As you can see, it's quite um, strong. So release it and that will make things easier. Now let's remove the gear indicator chain. And you do that by unscrewing this lock nut right here. Release it a little bit and then you can unscrew the other side. Once this part gets loose, we can unscrew the whole chain from the inside of the hub by rotating it counterclockwise. Now it's come apart. Keep this in a safe place. Now I'll be using the 15 millimeter wrench from the Brompton toolkit. You can use any 15 millimeter wrench for this purpose. Let's start here with this large nut with, um, that attaches the tank chain tensioner. Let's remove that one. I start with the tool and then I can use my fingers. Be careful not to lose the nut or the washer. Keep them in a safe place. Now let's remove the chain tensioner. Because we already removed the tension from it, it this is not gonna be um, a problem at all. Next step is to remove the two nuts that attach the wheel to the frame. Let's start here on the right side, which is the left side of the bike. Anyway, let's just undo these nuts, remove them. You also have these funky washers here that have grooves and everything. Sometimes they're hard to remove so you just give a little tap and they come out. Good. Do the same on the other side. Little tap. You can also wiggle the wheel a little bit and it comes out. Okay, now that everything has been removed, we can just take the, the chain outside of the cog and remove the wheel. There we go, first step completed. 
I like to lay the wheel on my lap here and let's start by removing the valve cap. Oh. Next, I'll pick the two tire levers that I have inside of the Brompton toolkit. And on the opposite side of the valve, we're going to start removing the, the tire. So take the Brompton lever that has the narrower end and on the opposite side of the valve, catch the bead of the tire and pull it, pull it out and then attach the lever to one of the spokes. Use the second lever to do a similar process just a couple of inches away from the first lever. Stick it in there, pull the bead out, and now, while still holding the lever, push it forward. And there we go. Now we can go around the whole tire, removing it from the rim. Now both levers come loose. We can put them aside. Now push the wheel, the tire, all the way to that side so we can push, force the valve outside. Take the valve out. Now carefully remove the tube from inside of the tire and keep it and keep it on top of the tire. We don't want to, to change the position and I'll show you why. If you are at home and you have access to a pen, look for the tire rotation direction. There is usually an arrow printed on the side of the tire. All right, so here it is. And then draw a similar arrow on your tube and I'll explain why later on. Okay, so now we can actually fix the puncture. So let's set the wheel aside. You don't need to remove the whole tire from the rim. That's that's not desirable. Now let's take the let's take the pump from you know the frame, the rear triangle. Let's bump the tube a little bit so that we know we can try and locate where the puncture is. All right, so I can already hear the puncture and here it is some punctures are harder to find so if you're at home you can just put some air into the tube and then submerge this into a sink filled with water and whatever the air is coming out that's where your puncture is so if you have your pen close by just draw a circle around it because sometimes it's hard to find again <sighs> Now from the toolkit, let's take this tiny piece of sandpaper and sand the tube around the place we marked. Sand very well so that the glue can stick. Okay, so there it is. Now I'll take one of the patches Brompton has its original red tiny pa uh, patches, but I prefer the Park Tool squared ones. And I'll tell you why as soon as we stick this patch onto the, um, the puncture. Okay, so now remove the patch from the paper with the glue side down, of course. Place the patch trying to center the puncture in the middle of the, the patch. The reason why I like this transparent square patch more than the opaque red patch from Brompton is that here you can see the bubbles through the patch and then you can use your nail to like really, really make it stick to the tube. As you can see in the end, it looks like, it even looks like the patch and the tube is a single thing. Now we're ready to reassemble the wheel. Let's pump just a little bit of air here. Just one or two strokes of the pump. Really don't want that to be the form. So just a little bit of air just to give some form to the, the, the thing. Now place your wheel again on top of your lap. Um, place your tube on top of your wheel. Look for where the valve is. All right. So let's have both in the same direction of rotation right now. 
what you're going to want to do is have your valve on top of the valve hole of the rim have both your inner tube and your tire in the same rotation and what we're going to do right now is look for exactly the place where your puncture was so it's right here you're going to examine that region inside of your tube to make sure there are no debris or anything sticking out maybe there is a little piece of metal sticking out from the inside of your of your tire in that case you want to remove that piece of of metal you know we're just making sure that there are no debris here exactly where that puncture happened in my case there is not so we can reassemble the wheel so press the tire all the way to the other side so we can have access and put the valve through the hole now let's fit the tube all the way in the tire okay now starting from the valve we're going to put the tire back inside of the rim you can start doing this by hand but there comes a point where it really becomes much harder the thing is once we press on one side the other side comes off so it's very hard to keep both sides inside as you are making your way through the middle one thing you can do to prevent the other side from popping out is use one of these straps or any straps really I just like these ones because they are always with me and you can tighten you can tighten your tire there all right then we can use the tire levers to place the tire inside of the rim from the other side working our way to where I positioned the strap the strap is preventing the tire from hopping outside of the, the rim and there we go we can now remove the strap so now we can place the rear wheel back into the frame sometimes it takes a little tap to go in okay let's have the chain go through the smaller cog and through this part here that's the derailleur let's make the chain go through that let's use let's put the washer and the nut on one of the sides so there is a flat portion here this flat portion goes to the top then we can put the nut back in place okay same thing on the other side so this washer needs to go in here so that this portion here is flush and then your nut great let's use our 15 millimeter wrench again to tighten this up it needs to be strong but not super strong same thing on the other side great now look at the inside of the chain tensioner that little bottom part here where it's squared needs to go on top of this tiny thing that sticks out of the washer so the chain tensioner goes like this we need this tiny wheel to be inside of the two um, borders here of the chain of the derailleur and make sure that it's wiggle it a little bit until you you can feel that it sit um, that it sits flush now take the washer place it there take the nut make sure the nut is going through the washer great let's tighten it up doesn't need to be super tight remember that this is just holding your chain tensioner what's actually holding your wheel is that other nut inside put some tension on the chain tensioner all the way to the other side all the way then bring the chain on top of it and release give it some paddle strokes just so it fits into place all right so we build the hardest portion of our um, whole process here next step is to put your gear indicator chain back into place so stick that inside of your hub and then when you feel that it's reached the bottom you rotate it clockwise all the way until it locks when it locked 
go back half a turn okay and now screw the gear indicator chain into the sleeve on the other side now here you don't need to go all the way here we need to adjust the internal gears and we do that by shifting the bike to the second gear on the rear hub so now the rear hub is in the middle gear and we're going to look inside through this hole here that we have in this nut and we want just one millimeter of that rod to appear so as you can see here we don't have anything appearing once we pull this just a little bit you can see that the rod starts popping out through the hole so we want to adjust this barrel here until we have one millimeter of rod showing through the hole which is basically right there so now we can lock that lock nut back we can screw that lock nut back against the barrel and your gears are adjusted now we just need to pump some air into the tire ideally you want to have around 100 psi on the rear tire you are not going to be able to do that with with this tiny pump so if you have a better pump at home make sure you use that to reach the right pressure not using the right pressure on your tires can damage the internal wall of the tire and that damage can actually rub against your inner tube and cause punctures and i'm telling you because that happened to me using the tiny pump from brompton is enough to get you home but then make sure you you put the right pressure as soon as you can for the front wheel the process is quite similar if you have a dynamo wheel make sure you unplug the dynamo before removing the wheel and then use a four millimeter wrench to remove the axle once the axle has been removed keep track of all the washers you need to put those back into place very similar to what we did um, for the rear wheel and there you go you can remove the wheel and do the same process as the rear wheel That's it for today. I hope this video brought you some new information, brought you some value. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel to grow. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye. I'll be completely honest with you I was kind of pissed when it started raining because <laughs> I, I had everything spread all over I put all my stuff back in the bag um, but yeah now that the Sun's coming up again kind of feels nice we got to be thankful for all the health that we have and being able to be outside on such a beautiful day it's just amazing I love this Rain starting to pick up again. Here we go. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful day. I don't want to deviate so much from the video. I just wanted to say that it's a beautiful day.